Today we are looking at the new Huddle 2 tablet from Tesco. For those of you that aren't from a country that has Tesco, they're a very large supermarket in the UK. I think they also own Fresh and Easy in the US, and they do have other locations worldwide. The Huddle 2 is only available in the UK as far as I'm aware though, which is a real shame because it does have a whiff of the Nexus 7 2013 about it. It's manufactured by Wistron, who are an ODM, that's original design manufacturer from Taipei in Thailand, where incidentally a lot of tech companies are from. It is aimed and marketed as a very family oriented tablet that should appeal to everyone and not just those who are very tech savvy. So let's take a look. Here it is in the box which features a large picture of the tablet itself. Around the back there's some simple specs and features outlined as you can see. If we use this little handle thing we can slide the box open to reveal the tablet with a helpful screen cover on it that explains where everything is and what it does as far as hardware is concerned. Underneath we have some money off vouchers, as you'd expect from Tesco, some of the services available on the tablet, such as Blinkbox, their video streaming service. Also there's a nice, easy to read quick start guide slash user manual. If we look into the box we see the USB cable and charger are clearly labelled as well as a helpline for anyone having trouble, something that I thought was a pretty nice and simple touch compared to pretty much all other tablets I've ever unboxed and shows the effort to gear this towards people who have little or no experience with these things. The charger is, as with most Android devices, a standard micro USB. And talking of that, let's start off the physical feature tour with the micro USB charging port located on the right hand side of the tablet in landscape form. On the left there is a 3.5mm audio jack, a location that I personally much prefer to having at the top like a lot of devices. Along the top we have the power on button as well as the volume up and down switches. And at the bottom there is the micro SD card slot supporting up to 32GB expansion and a micro HDMI port for output to a TV. Around the back we see the Huddle logo in the centre, two fairly large stereo speakers as well as the 5 megapixel camera in the top right corner. The back is made from a grippy rubber that makes the tablet feel very secure when holding it as well as offering a degree of protection against bumps and scuffs that something like an iPad would be very susceptible to. Finally on the front we see a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera suitable for Skyping etc as well as a charging indicator light. The screen is 8.3 inches and has what they call toughened glass, although I can't find out if it's Gorilla Glass or something else. So let's talk specs then. It comes pre-installed with Android 4.4 KitKat, though as it's reasonably new I imagine it might get an update to do Lollipop 5.0. It has an Intel Atom Z3735D quad-core processor clocked at 1.83GHz, 2GB of RAM, 16GB of internal flash storage, around 9GB ish available to use but expandable by micro SD card as I said before. It features Wi-Fi 802.11a slash b slash g slash n so that's 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies as well as Bluetooth 4.0. It has an 8.3 inch IPS display screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 that's a pixel density of 273. The front facing camera has a resolution of 720p for video and the rear one is full HD 1080p. It has GPS, a 3 axis accelerometer, e-compass, gyroscope and ambient light sensors. As mentioned before it has stereo speakers featuring Dolby Audio. The dimensions of the tablet are 128 by 224 by 9mm, that's height, width, depth and a weight of 420 grams, which is rather on the heavy side. So as I said before, that this is generally marketed towards families and people who generally haven't used tablets before. To this end, it comes with not only frankly excellent technical support, but also such features as the Child Safety app. Now I know this is a massive pulling point for this tablet to many families, and it's very easy to set up, it's very easy to use. There are nice, clear, concise instructions. I've even been through it myself, even though I don't have a child. In fact, it's not even my tablet. So what it does is you, it allows you to set, well, it allows you to make profiles for your children or child or whatever, uh, and you can set how long you want them to use it for, what apps they can use, and lo lots of things like that. And most importantly, you can stop them spending all your money with tapping away like, oh, I like this game, oh, I like this game, I like this game, I like this game, and end up with some nasty surprises. So yes, that is a really top feature, and I know it's a big pulling point for this tablet. The other inkling as this being sort of marketed towards the families are the colours that it is available in. So we have black, which is fairly normal, obviously. 
as well as blue, green-ish, orange, pink, purple, red, and of course white that I have right here. Though I wouldn't generally say white's the best colour to have a tablet in because it's Especially if you've got a family using it all the time, putting it all over the place, then uh, it could get really dirty. And I think even this one, which isn't being used by a child, has got some like dirty marks and fingers and stuff on it. So, but yeah, there's lots of other colours, so that's not too much of an issue. And of course, Tesco have a range of covers to sell you if you don't want to have it all vulnerable at the back, where you can make all sorts of patterns and what have you. So how is it to use? Well, firstly, it does feel very good in the hands. This kind of grippy, rubbery type texturized back is really pleasant to hold. So that's top top marks for that. And it does give you the confidence that if you've got like children who are going to keep throwing it around and onto stuff, that it might not get damaged as quickly as you might expect. The screen is, of course, a huge plus point for this tablet. If I can do that on the screen, open it up. Up, it is 1920 by 1200, which is a really good resolution for something this size. Any higher probably wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. It's an IPS panel, so of course it's clear, it's vibrant, and I don't know how well I can show you this like this, but the viewing angles are pretty good. So great for gathering everyone round, though. Whoever does that, really? Who does anybody get their entire family around a tiny little tablet like this? I don't think so, but adverts like to make you believe they do. Performance is pretty good. It's all pretty zippy, as you'd expect from the specs that it has. The only noticeable slowdown you ever get is uh, sometimes when you're loading up the Tesco launcher right here. Though I think it's preloaded already here. I'm not sure how well you can see it on the screen. But some of this can be a bit to load. I think that is an inherent fact of the launcher itself. I'm trying to sweep it back from the screen. That's not working. But never mind. Overall, the in-app performance is very good. It's the multitasking, and I've opened up lots of tabs in Chrome like I always do, and there wasn't really that much of a slowdown. It's all performed like perfectly well. And you have to remember the price point of this tablet. This isn't a 300 400-pound iPad. So as a non-Android user, I'm tend to stick more to iOS personally. I'm not all that au fait with their operating system, but I believe that it's quite close to stock other than the Tesco launcher, which you get right here. Yeah, it's just generally trying to push their products on you and that. But if you're a Tesco customer, that might not necessarily be a bad thing. And with the child safety app, it is going to stop your kid like ordering an entire year's worth of candy or sweets. Watching films on this is a really, really strong point with the aforementioned great screen. Uh, the stereo speakers at the back are pretty good. Again, for the, for the price of this tablet, very good. But they are sort of playing into your hands or playing into the back here. I mean, you can do the old cupping trick to make the sound come round it and into your ears, but that's not ideal. But for the price point, you're not really going to get anything that's going to be much better than this. However, there are some downsides to this tablet. For a start, it is 420 grams. That is quite heavy in the hands. And if you're sitting here watching something like this, then it's you do start to notice it on your hands. Uh, and actually, worst of all, and there are many reports of this, the battery life is really very poor. Now, Tesco don't even tell you how big the battery is inside. They just say it has eight hour battery life and it hasn't. It's got about five hours. I don't know how they're testing it, but and that is pretty poor. So if you're going on a long haul flight or something, perhaps this isn't the tablet to take with you. But if you've got it plugged in, it's great, but tablet's plugged in. I mean, if you're using it kind of around the house or something and you're going to be able to quickly plug it in if the charge does get low, then maybe that's not so bad. But if you're out and about, you really don't want something that's going to be dropping down all that quickly. Uh, the other thing, the cameras, the rear facing camera here and the front facing, uh, I mean, they're very, they're very all right. I'll put it that way, they're very all right. So they're nothing special, but then again, the Nexus 7, which is sort of a similar type tablet that I kind of alluded to earlier, that is, doesn't really have great cameras either, so. 
So what competition is there for this tablet? As I just mentioned, the Nexus 7, although it is slightly more expensive, I think you can get it for about £169.99, something like that, maybe? Maybe. Uh, it has very, very similar performance to it. Obviously, this has a bigger screen, and it is newer, so it is uh, slightly faster. But the Nexus 7 obviously is an excellent, excellent tablet, though I think still more expensive and with the new Nexus 9 I believe it is coming out I don't really think that's going to be around much longer uh, also there is the Amazon Kindle Fire 7 HD 7 or whatever it's called and that does have some pretty great specs on it but on the big downside of that the screen isn't quite as good on it and and this is the biggest kicker uh, your locked into the Amazon ecosystem which is fine if you use a lot of Amazon products but you're not given full access to the Google Play Store and that for me is a complete deal breaker especially as with the Huddle 2 you do get the full Google Play Store so all in all I think the Huddle 2 from Tesco is a pretty great device it has good specs and good performance linked with its ease of use especially geared towards novices and you have a top top tablet for people who've not used tablets very often for families and heck even if you just want a decent android tablet at a lower price then this is absolutely perfect the tesco launch if you know what you're doing you can easily download another one and get rid of that and it will just be android 4.4 kitkat which is pretty damn good of course, on the downside, the battery life isn't great, but you have to remember that this tablet is priced currently at just £129. And for this screen, with this specs, you really cannot go wrong. Of course, i just like to add the reason that it's that cheap is probably because you have like the Tesco stuff, they're pushing you towards Blinkbox, which is their online streaming service, and they, they're trying to make the money back like that, similar to what Google do with the Nexus devices. So there we have it. That is the Huddle 2 from Tesco's. Thank you guys for liking, sharing, watching, commenting. Uh, leave me a comment if you have anything to say about this tablet or tablets in general. I'd love to hear it. Check out our links in the video description for Amazon, although of course this isn't actually available from Amazon, but it's there if you'd like to use it. Also we have an affiliate link for Tour Guide VPN if you enjoy secure web browsing. Of course that's all optional and you don't have to use it, but we really would appreciate it if you do, if you're in the market for that sort of thing. Thank you guys for watching again and I will see you next time.